Good evening and thanks for watching KRIX 5 News at 10 p.m. I'm Austin Sack and a happy 145th birthday to the state of Colorado. We begin tonight following the current I-70 road conditions. The Glenwood Canyon is currently under a flash flood watch until 9 p.m. tonight. We will continue to update you on our website, westernslopenow.com. And now let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Russ Pappas into the conversation. Russ, we're under a flash flood watch right now. What's the possibility of it upgrading to a warning? And are there storms in the area? Thanks, Chance. It is a sweet treat indeed. Here at the Palisade Peach Festival, the peaches did not disappoint and have gathered quite the crowd. At the festival, anyone attending can take part in many peach-themed events or enjoy a treat that's just peachy. Now that the mud and debris is nearly clear, Governor Polis visited Glenwood Springs and describes the damages to I-70 as something out of this world. We find that the major damage is about a 15-foot pothole. You might call it a pothole from hell. Crews are currently working to clear all the debris from the roads from the previous mudslides. Governor Jerry Polis just arrived to check out the current conditions of I-70 after being granted emergency relief runs from Washington. Road closed signs like these have become famous landmarks while traveling on I-70 through the Glenwood Tunnel. After several mudslides restricted access to the Glenwood Springs area, the road is back open. Some Coloradans are celebrating their Labor Day weekend by heading to the Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park for some fun in the mud. It may have been a long drive, but it was, it's fun to be back out here after the huge pandemic and stuff. And it's nice to take a break from the big city and everything. We begin tonight with an update on a murder and house fire that happened late last month. The Mesa County District Attorney has filed a five count formal complaint against Kellen Hoyt. Earlier today, officials unsealed an arrest affidavit for Hoyt, offering new details in the case. It was September 22nd that Grand Junction Fire Department first responded to a house fire on the 500 block of 29 and a half road. Firefighters discovered 80-year-old Mary Cruthers dead at the scene. The affidavit says a shirt or apron was tightly wrapped around her neck and Cruthers was not identifiable at the time. The Mesa County coroner determined Cruthers died from an incised wound to the neck. Hoyt, who is 34, stands charged with murder in the first degree, first degree arson, tampering with a deceased human body, tampering with physical evidence, and second degree assault. Mesa County police officers found Hoyt soon after at his sister's house where he waived his rights and interviewed with investigators. He admitted to murdering Cruthers while he was on meth. According to Mesa County Sheriff's Office, Hoyt believed he was speaking to Cruthers through a voice or sixth sense. He's being held at Mesa County Detention Center on a cash bond of $2 million as he awaits his court appearance set for November 10th. We're a long way away from even discussing a plea agreement in this case. Ultimately, because this is a victim's rights case, we'll have to consult with the family of Mary Crothers um, on any possible plea agreement in the matter, but that is far down the road. In the meantime, because the case appears to be solved, the district attorney is working with the sheriff's office to finalize the investigation. Thanks, Chance. The COVID case count in Mesa County has gradually increased since the start of the school year. One local business, Homestyle Bakery, has maintained its mask mandate since the beginning of the pandemic and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. As a small business, the owner of Homestyle Bakery decided to enforce all staff and customers to be masked as a way to help slow the spread of COVID-19. Although much of Mesa County does not require masks, anyone looking to buy some local baked goods will be asked to follow the store's policy. We would ask anyone coming through the door to please put on their own mask or ask us for a mask um, while they're in here and it's just a matter of a few minutes. We can serve them and they can be on their way or they can call us and we will bring goods out to their car. While battling a shortness of staff, Homestyle Bakery is asking all customers to mask up, a policy this small business owner believes more businesses should take into consideration. We wanted to protect our employees and also our customers. We have a lot of at-risk customers that we have increased our customer base considerably. Homestyle Bakery will continue its mask policy until there is a major decrease in COVID activity in Mesa County. Thanks for watching KRIX 5 News at 10 and joining us to wrap up your weekend. I'm Austin Sack. Earlier this afternoon, Mesa County Sheriff's Office responded to several calls regarding a house fire located in Clifton. Clifton Fire Department responded to the house fire located off Smallwood Drive in Clifton earlier this afternoon. 
Mesa County Sheriff's Office got a 911 call stating that someone may have been in the house while it caught flames. Clifton Fire Department has informed KREX that nobody was in the house and no one has been transported to the hospital for injuries of any kind. The fire off Smallwood Drive has been extinguished and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. KREX will continue to update you on this situation as more details on what caused this fire are released. Thanks Chance, that's absolutely right. I'm here at the Moffat County Hot Air Balloon Festival for this three day event that will go on until tomorrow, August 8th. Now this festival is a lot more than just hot air balloons. There's vendors, rides, snacks, live music behind me, a car show, and oh so much more. Today I actually got the opportunity to ride in a hot air balloon myself. It was my first time and I was absolutely blown away by the experience. The pure bliss of feeling weightlessness uh, while you're soaring above the clouds is a feeling I will never forget and I'm already counting down the days until I can get back up in the air. Now tomorrow there is another scheduled launch for the balloons at 6.30 p.m. for tomorrow, August 8th. Now this is weather permitting. As you can tell from behind me, there are current smoky conditions in the skies. This is not only a concern for air quality, but also the visibility of the pilots moving through the air. They're watching the weather conditions as well as the wind to make sure that they ensure a safe flight for any balloons that go up tomorrow. But enough of just talking about it, let's get to the action. In Craig, Colorado, the early bird gets the worm, or should I say, gets the chance to go for a ride in a hot air balloon. Not much happens in Craig at 5 in the morning, but today colorful balloons painted the smoky skies at the Moffat County Hot Air Balloon Festival this year. Soaring weightlessly above the clouds with people waving from below is a once in a lifetime experience. For someone that has never been on a hot air balloon ride, there is only one question. Hey, no. Diving. Riding in a hot air balloon can be addicting, or at least that's what a balloon pilot on their 32 year of service said. I got a ride, and that was my first ride, and I bought a balloon two weeks later. Floating in a hot air balloon 6,000 feet in the air is unlike anything else, but for anyone curious as to what it may relate to. The only thing I can really compare um, flying to is scuba diving because it's just so calm, and you don't see the Unless there's clouds, you really don't see the atmosphere around you. Activities at the Moffat County Hot Air Balloon Festival are not just limited to the air. Some family fun can also be found on the ground. Watch the colorful balloons flying above while you check out the exotic cars displayed throughout the entire festival. You can buy your latest festival merchandise while snacking on some tasty treats. This year at the Moffat County Hot Air Balloon Festival, there truly is something for everyone. We wanted to come up here today and see the balloons and the car show and have the children get involved in the, uh, the rides here. With weather permitting, the Moffat County Hot Air Balloon Festival will have a third launch day, giving you the chance to catch a glimpse of a balloon one last time. Twenty-one. there have been 260 deaths on Colorado roadways. Of those, more than half were unbuckled. You've heard it before. Click it or take it. During a recent statewide initiative, over 2,123 Colorado drivers were cited on Colorado roadways for not being buckled. These numbers demonstrate the continued awareness needed for seatbelt safety. This year, CDOT is unveiling a new campaign to share the many reasons Colorados choose to buckle up. This is really more of a lighthearted campaign to share some of the reasons that people buckle up in Colorado. We're always trying to figure out new ways to change people's behavior when it comes to buckling up. According to CDOT, 14% of people choose to not buckle up in Colorado. And as we know, driving fatalities spike in the summer season. But why add a new seatbelt initiative? Well, we're always trying to find new angles to reach people with the seatbelt safety message. And over the years, we've come across hundreds of reasons why people buckle up. As we head into the July 4th holiday weekend, CDOT is reminding Colorado drivers to do one thing. Buckle up. Thanks, Lena and Logan. During the public hearing portion of today's commissioner meeting, many residents shared they want paper ballots. Some even went as far as saying that they would offer their spare time during election season to count them. But paper balance may not be the answer. Just because it's hand count doesn't mean that it's always accurate too, because there's always room for human in pursuit of the truth, whether they are in support of County Clerk Tina Peters or against, answers is what Mesa County residents seek. 
it's no surprise that you know everyone is very divided on which stance that they take, whether you know they believe there was fraud or not. I think it's just um, it's imperative that we find the truth, whatever that truth is. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold said in a news conference that Mesa County must replace its election voting equipment after a security breach at the Mesa County Clerk and Elections Office. The ongoing investigation led to an enormous turnout at the commissioner's meeting today where many residents shared their opinion on other secure voting options. A lot of people are wanting to go back to paper ballots. You know, yes, there's going to probably be a little bit of human error in there, but you've got a lot of people who are standing behind that call to action and wanting to be able to figure out how can we so somewhat do a reset. And then there's the opposing view. It's not a way to go. It's 2021, and, and uh, if you don't uh, trust any system that's tied to the Internet, we're going to shut our whole county down. Although County Clerk Tina Peters denounced an investigation by the Secretary of State, the district attorney is conducting an investigation themselves. It seems really sketchy to not want to investigate. If you feel confident in your gold standard, let us look. Prove us wrong. As Mesa County residents search for answers, commissioners want the public to know they want the truth. We are in the pursuit of truth. We want that very much. Um, we just don't simply have all the facts right now. I hope you will be as patient as we are trying to be and wait for the results from our district attorney. Regardless of residents' opinion on County Clerk Tina Peters, they all want the truth. KREX will continue to update you on the investigation as more information becomes available. Thanks, Rob. And you're right, that major change can be seen in the housing market for the 2022 proposed budget. Now, that budget observes key trends and has revealed a significant change. According to Freddie Mac's Housing Price Index, Mesa County is outpacing the state and nation in assessed market values and building permits. Now, as you can see on the diagram here, Grand Junction on the left continues to lead the Denver metro area, the state as a whole, and the nation with a 20.9% increase change since May 20. Now, CARIX will take an extended look at this trend, but for now, reporting live in the studio and first on the Western Slope, I'm Austin Sack, CARIX 5 News. Rob? Welcome back to CARIX 5 News at 10 p.m. Now, if you turned into our broadcast at the beginning, we met up with our reporter Chance Sticklin. Now, Chance was live at the scene in Palisade, where you can see from behind me, multiple mudslides and flooding were caused from the rain we experienced this afternoon. Yes, we are very grateful for the rain as Colorado and especially Mesa County has been battling severe drought conditions. But this rain has also been added concerns for drivers traveling through the area. At last update, Chance was moved from the scene so crews could continue to clear up the area to allow traffic to safely pass through. We'll continue to update our website, westernslopenow.com, with all road openings and closures as mudslides and fundings continue throughout the season. Thanks for watching KREX 5 News at 10 p.m. tonight. And for the latest news, weather, and sports 24 hours a day, you can head on over to our website. Good night.